The Industrial Revolution of the 19th century brought about major changes to American society. New York, Chicago, and other cities grew much larger, drawing people from rural areas and from abroad to fill the many factory jobs that were becoming available. As the cities grew, many social injustices became apparent. The urge to end these injustices was the driving force behind a new movement, the Progressive Movement. From about 1890 to 1920, progressives used various techniques to convince the government to acknowledge, address, and amend the inequalities found across the nation. They also took steps aimed at improving the lives of workers and the poor people living in cities. Reporters and writers helped advance progressive reforms by writing articles and books about the social problems they saw. There was an outcry, especially from the middle class, when the stories were published. President Theodore Roosevelt called the writers muckrakers because they were too interested in the ugly side of life. One famous muckraker was photographer Jacob Rees of the New York Evening Sun. Reese's pictures focused on the dirty, overcrowded tenements that housed the urban poor. The sanitation was horrible. I mean, and the living circumstances were horrible because conditions were so horribly crowded. I mean, there were these front tenements, and then there was a back tenement, and then in the little tiny open space in between the front and back tenement was some overflowing ghastly cesspool. And imagine what the smells must have been. The progressives did not just rely on the government to help the poor people of the nation's cities. Many started settlement houses, these buildings were community centers where reformers offered services such as preschool for very young children and classes for adults. One of the goals of the settlement house was to help immigrants adapt to life in the United States. Jane Addams was a leader in the settlement house movement. In 1889, she opened Hull House in Chicago, which grew rapidly and helped many struggling families. Other reformers followed in her footsteps. By the end of the Progressive Era, there were hundreds of settlement houses across the nation. Lincoln Steffens was another famous muckraker. As managing editor of McClure's magazine, he published stories that revealed political corruption in the nation's cities and its effect on people's lives. Prior to the Progressive Era, political bosses controlled city politics. The bosses used unfair and illegal tactics to win elections and stay in power. They also enriched themselves by taking bribes. Elections were rigged, votes were stolen, and the democratic system was destroyed. As anger at corruption spread, many cities adopted new forms of city government aimed at preventing corruption. Voters elected mayors who pledged to reform and push state and federal governments for help. This push resulted in laws giving citizens new powers. For instance, the right of recall gave voters the power to remove corrupt politicians from office. The right of initiative made it possible for citizens to enact laws when state legislatures would not. Also, Congress passed the 17th Amendment in 1913 giving citizens, not state legislatures, the right to vote for senators. Progressives also looked at the problems caused by industrial growth. In 1906, muckraker Upton Sinclair published the novel The Jungle, which exposed the unsafe and unhealthy conditions in the meatpacking industry. At the time that The Jungle was written, the plants were horrible places to work. They were full of violence. They weren't clean and frequently diseased and dead animals were slaughtered and made into food. Before writing his story, Sinclair worked in meatpacking plants and witnessed the horrors firsthand. Upton Sinclair went into the plants and he saw dead animals being slaughtered. He saw filth all over the plant. He saw products going into sausage that shouldn't have been there. But more importantly, 
he came out of the plant radicalized by what happened to the workers, how they got chewed up the same way the food did. Workers were frequently injured on the job, losing fingers to grinders and slicing machines. Their skin and lungs were exposed to chemicals that could burn and destroy tissue. Injured workers were useless to employers, so they were quickly replaced, leaving them jobless and bringing suffering to their families. Sinclair hoped his story would raise public support for the workers. Instead, people demanded that the meatpacking industry be regulated. It was a wake-up call for the country. It was also the right book at the right time in American history. Up to that point in time, the public hadn't really thought too much about the conditions of the meat that they were buying. In 1906, Congress passed the Meat Inspection Act. It required meat plants to be cleaned up and meats to be inspected before they were shipped out. Other laws passed by Congress tried to make sure that other foods and medicines were healthy and safe. Progressives influenced local governments, state governments, and Congress, and they even got to the White House. In 1901, Theodore Roosevelt became the first progressive to be president. Throughout his career, Roosevelt established himself as a man committed to reform. He fought political corruption and inequality. As president, he introduced the Square Deal. With this program, he aimed to protect the middle and lower classes from the power and influence of the wealthy and to give everyone an equal opportunity at success. Ideas shared by most progressives. The progressive movement began when ordinary citizens revealed problems caused by the growth of industries and cities. Their ideas and solutions moved from the nation's cities through state capitals to the halls of Congress. Many of the protections we enjoy today are the result of the hard work and dedication of the progressives.